Somebody better go and give God some praise. Praise God for you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Doctor. Come on, let's give God a glorious, a glorious hand. Right? Amen. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Your 
face. Come on. Somebody go ahead and praise God for you. You're not wrong with that. God will get to praise God for you. You got to thank God. Amen. Now, I'm going to tell Sister Fortune, amen, that the usher did such a great job. Did the usher do it? Yeah. Amen. 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 We just thank you, Lord. God is, God is, God is so good. Amen. Amen. Anybody been for a word today? Amen. Anybody need a word today? Amen. Amen. We're going to call your attention back to Genesis chapter 3. Amen. We dealt with that a little bit last week. We'll deal with it just a little bit more. Genesis chapter 3. When you found it, amen, please stand to your feet. Genesis chapter 3. Help me honor the word of the Lord. Amen. We're just going to read a few verses in your hearing, but I'm going to invite you to keep your uh, Bibles or your devices open that you may follow along. We might go down a few more verses. Amen. We're just going to read right now uh, verses 9, 10, and 11. Amen. Genesis chapter 3. Verses 9, 10, and 11. Amen. And the word of God says, And the Lord God called unto Adam, and he said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree? Whereof I commanded thee that thou shalt not eat of. And may the Lord ever add a blessing to the to the reading of his word, sanctified in our hearts, therefore making it really good for our souls. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Let us bow in a word of prayer to heaven and Father. We come, God, right now. God, we just thank you, thank you, thank you all the days of our life. Oh, for what you have done and what you are doing. Now, God, is preaching time. And God, we pray for the type of anointing that makes preaching easy. God, we pray for the type of anointing that makes hearing your word real easy. God, we pray for the type of anointing that makes doing your word easy. And now, God, when you're partnering with us in the power of your anointing, God, I thank you, God, for an anointing to preach it so they can get it. I thank you for that, God. But also, God, as you partner with us in anointing, we ask that you partner with us in the covering of your covenant. Cover us, O oh God, with the blood, the precious blood of Jesus, that the devil will know whose we are and who not to mess with. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Let the household of faith say amen, 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 amen. amen. and amen. amen. Today, for our time together in the Word of God, I just want to continue in the sermon series, uh, Standing on the Promises of God. Uh, today's sermon, however, is a continuation, a part two, if you will, of last week's sermon, Where Are You? Uh, last week, we took a good look uh, at God's question to Adam after Adam and Eve ate of the forbidden fruit in the sermon of where are you? Oh, we look beyond the physical place uh, that Adam was to look at where he was spiritually. Uh, and just as importantly, uh, where he had been uh, and what he had been doing spiritually that led him to being where he was uh, at this very moment. Uh, hiding from God. Uh, um, uh, see, the aim and objective of this sermon uh, was to help each of us see where we truly are when it comes to our relationship uh, with the Lord. Uh, we left you last week uh, with the question, where are you? Uh, and my hope for you was that uh, each and every one of us could answer, I am standing uh, on the promises of God. Uh, because church, uh, to be in that enlightened place means uh, that you are standing uh, in the Word of God. Uh, for it is in the Word of God uh, uh, that we find our salvation uh, uh, for our souls. In the Word of God, uh, we find peace for our path uh, to fulfilling His purpose. Amen. Uh, and His divine protection uh, of every promise uh, that He has spoken uh, in His Word. Come on, somebody. Uh, I thank God, amen, uh, that last week, uh, uh, 
while we celebrated the idea of where we should be is standing on the promises of God as we stand together in the word of God. You see, that was really where we are, but was that really where we all were? Amen. Just can I tell you, the enemy Satan is after all your promises. I know it. Uh, not to make them his own because he can't, because he know he got one promise left, and that is he, he and the false prophet, amen, will be cast into a lake of fire, amen, to burn for all, all eternity. He know his promise, he know where he gonna end up, but it's after your promise, amen, it's after your promise, amen, to put you in a place where you can't receive your promises, amen. Uh, the enemy took Adam and Eve uh, off their path to receiving and fulfilling uh, the promises God had for them, uh, standing on the promises of God uh, as they look, uh, and they should have been obeying the word of God. Uh, and truly, church, uh, this is where we ought to be too, standing on the word of God, standing on the promises of God uh, as we obey God. Uh, but just like with the example uh, of Adam and Eve, where we should be may not be where we are. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. See, now, let me say it here real quick. Uh, even though as your pastor, uh, you are not my sheep. Amen. Uh, you belong to another. Amen. Uh, and his name is Jehovah God. Uh, so it is not my place. Amen. Uh, to try to judge another man's servant or another man's sheep. Uh, but uh, it is not my place to point out uh, anyone uh, that I think may not be where uh, they act like they are. Uh, but this is what I know. Uh, I do know, however, that there are times when we can get caught up uh, in the celebration of the group, amen, uh, and the word, uh, and miss, and miss, or even uh, sidestep, or even avoid altogether uh, the revelation of that same word. Uh, see, it does you, can I tell somebody, I'm going to help somebody today, uh, it does you no good uh, to be shouting about a word so excitedly uh, that you miss what the word uh, was meant to do for you. Uh, come on. Uh, see, the word, the word that come out of the mouth of God. Every word was given by the inspiration of God. Every word is meant to do a job in you. The Bible said that the word is like a two-edged sword. I mean, it cut going in and it's sword is going to cut coming out. It is there to divide bone from marrow. It can split hair. It can show you the way. It can bring the light. It can bring, it, it can bring reproof. It can bring exhortation and it can bring correction. Amen. You got to take it in. Amen. And understand what you're shouting about. Because if you mess around, you miss what you need. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Somebody. See, we should get sometimes we get so busy celebrating a word that we should allow, we should be allowing that word to sanctify us. Jesus said in John. 17 and 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. In other words, set them apart, fix them up, deliver them from all evil all by the word. See, church? See, we can pray together, amen. We can praise together, but we can show no sin together. We can gather together. We can celebrate together. And that's all well and good. But this is still a personal walk with you and your Lord and Savior. And we all need to come to grips with where we are. Come on, somebody. And I tell you, many of us celebrated standing on the promises of God on last week and standing on the word as being where we are. But maybe, maybe, maybe some of y'all couldn't truly say that. You know when you're caught up in the crowd, you know, you just go along sometimes. You be pushed with the crowd. And maybe you don't want to go that way, but the crowd is so great. And everybody's so excited. You decide to go. But what you need is over here. And you might need to step out of the crowd for a minute and get what you need before you get back in. Maybe somebody was like that. Maybe somebody was saying, y'all were 
celebrate, but I'm really not there yet. Oh, what about me? Somebody might have been saying, I messed up so many times. Well, what about me? But see, that's where I want to be, but I ain't there yet. I ain't nowhere near. What about me? Well, can I tell you today, even if you can't see it in your physical state, and you don't feel it in your emotional place, and in your spirit, you don't feel worthy of standing on the promises of God. Can I tell somebody, just before you get too down on yourself, there are still promises for you to stand on. Come on, somebody. There's still a word waiting on you. Come on, somebody. There's still hope for you. Can I tell you why? Because God ain't done with you yet. Come on, somebody. Oh, somebody need to be something already. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God ain't done with you yet. Oh, that's the video ministry. That's my title. Amen. God ain't done with you yet. Church, as we pick up our preaching text, uh, uh, we find Adam. Uh, he's in hiding church. Adam was living and operating as if God uh, was completely done with him, uh, as if God had washed his hands of him. Uh, Adam had gone into hiding, witness protection, if you will. Uh, see, look, uh, church, when God uh, asked Adam, where are you? Uh, Adam answered as if uh, that was it. It's over. Complete. Uh, finito. Pull down the curtain as it stays left. Amen. See, I know I'm done, so I'm hiding. And Adam probably felt like I'll have to hide myself forever and ever. See, that makes me wonder, Adam, what were you doing when God came and talked to you every day? Were you not paying attention? Were you just skipping rocks on the lake? I don't know what you were doing. You should have learned that God knows all. And God sees all oh, that God really cares for you. Oh God, can I help somebody real quick? Oh, we come to church at Sunday after Sunday. We look, we know who God is. We hear his voice. But then I'm here to tell you that some of us don't know how deep the love goes. You see, the love go real deep all the way down. The love, it ain't just a superficial kind of love. It's a deep, ever abiding love. It's a love that's there for you, even if you ain't there for the love. Come on, come on, somebody. See, some of us don't know how deep the love goes. So can I tell you, Adam, what were you thinking when you made it, when you made an apron to cover yourself? You hurt yourself. What did you think that was going to do? Why was you hiding? See, personally, I don't think Adam was thinking at all, at least not in the spirit. See, he was in uncharted territory, amen, uh, for him. See, he was in disobedience. Yeah. So can I tell you, he wasn't cut like that, amen. See, Adam was created to have a choice, but up until then, up until now, he had always chose obedience and not disobedience. And disobedience, can I tell you, is a good thing he was trying to choose obedience because when he did choose disobedience, disobedience has a cost. It cost him his relationship with God as he knew it. It cost him unlimited access to the glory of God. And it will cost him his place in Eden. Can I tell you Adam had never seen God disappointed with him. So yes, he hid. How many of us are hiding from God today? Some of us may be hiding because of things we have done, mistakes we have made some of us are hiding because of the families that we come from. Some of us come from the wrong side of the tracks, so to speak. So we hiding. Some of us are hiding because of the skeletons in our closets. Some of us are hiding because of what others think of us. Some of us are hiding because of what others say about us. Some of us are hiding like Adam because we think oh, that God thinks the worst of us. 
But I want to tell you today, God already knows where you are. Come on, what you are feeling and what you are going through, what you did and what you did not do. And just like with Adam, God already knows what it takes to deliver you. Come on, anybody trying to call you right now? God knows. He knows all about it. God knows. He knows all about it. Can I tell you, uh, whatever God, uh, whatever you're doing, uh, God's not through uh, with you yet. Uh, can I tell you in response uh, to Adam's answer of hiding, uh, because he was naked, uh, God didn't say, uh, where are you naked? Uh, but he asked him, who told you uh, that you were naked? Uh, can I tell you, uh, God didn't have to ask Adam why, uh, because why he was naked? Uh, because God already knew he was. Uh, but it was for the fact uh, that Adam and Eve uh, were covered uh, by the glory uh, they would have been naked. Uh, but look, can I tell you, uh, when they were disobedient uh, to God, uh, uh, amen, they stepped out of the glory. Yeah. See, while you're in the glory, uh, all God sees of you uh, is glory, 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 uh, glory, hallelujah, uh, since I Disobedience pulls you out of the Lord, out of the presence of the Lord, and out of the Lord's vision on the spiritual level. And let me tell you, absence of the glory in your life will manifest itself in where you are in life. You won't be where you ought to be in the Lord without the presence of His glory. Life. And can I tell you, uh, and we're no glory. Uh, yeah, you naked. Uh, and all you see is your lack. Uh, all you see is your insecurity. All you see is your shortcomings. Uh, all you see is your sin. Uh, and all you're left with. Uh, and that's not what you want God to see uh, about you. Uh, so like Adam, uh, we hid from the very one uh, who loves us too much uh, to leave us the way we are. Uh, if only we will come unto him. Uh, Adam was hiding when he should have been running back to you, oh God. He should have been running back, trying to get back, trying to get that quick fast in a hurry. Oh God, I don't know how long I can preach what I got, but I'm here to tell you right now. God ain't done, God ain't done, God ain't done what you got. The Bible says in Matthew 11, 28 and 29, this is how we need to come. Is that come unto me, all ye that are Labor, and I have laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am weak and I am lowly in heart, and you shall find rest. And God knows when you are in heaven, you are not at rest. There is no peace in you, there is no joy in you, there is no love in you. But God was not done with Adam, just like He's not done with us. See, God just wanted Adam to get to the real problem, disobedience to his word. Just like with us, we avoid the real issue. So God said to him, who told you that you were naked? Did you eat of the tree? Oh, can I tell you, did I told you not to eat? Church, it is right here that God began to put some things in motion to show Adam that God not fool with him yet. Let me share some things with you before I go. The Lord will move your stumbling blocks Amen. just to show you that he ain't done with you. In Bible days, as a cruel joke, kids used to put blocks of wood or stone in front of the line just to see them fall. Amen. Or stumble. 
Jehovah has the term stumbling block. But God commanded the children of Israel in Leviticus 19 and 14 to not to allow that. So when God asked Adam, who told you you were naked? He gave the woman Adam the source of his problem. Well, when he gave it to the woman, the woman died by lack of nobody else. Or maybe she has some spiritual insight that the man did not have. He said it wasn't me, but it was that servant, that rascally servant. He came and he beguiled me. And well, look, and he caught me off my game. Well, because of the servant, God looked at the servant, and I'm here to tell you, we'll move your stumbling blocks to show you he ain't done with you. He began to look at the servant, amen, and he told the servant in verses 14 and 15, that look, look, you used to walk upright, but from now on, you are going to crawl on the ground because of this deed. You're cursed above every animal. On your belly shall you move, and the very man that you tried to deceive, that was made out of the dust of the earth, yeah. That you shall eat uh, for all your days. Uh, see the curse of the servant. Uh, um, uh, continues uh, because God puts an enmity uh, between the serpent, uh, his seed, uh, and the seed of the woman. Uh, church, uh, God will take care of your stumbling blocks. Uh, there are those that seek uh, your demise. Uh, there are those that seek uh, your demise in obedience to their master, the devil. Uh, and God sees this. Uh, and God will take care of that. Uh, but God has also equipped you uh, with the word. Uh, so so when the stumbling blocks come, uh, you yeah. ain't got to fall, uh, but you can allow his word uh, to be the overcomer in your life. Uh, so look, you can't stay back uh, without this lesson. Uh, and here's a lesson uh, in spiritual accountability. Just because uh, somebody did something to you, uh, just because uh, somebody put a stumbling block in your life, uh, just because uh, they did you dirty, uh, there ain't no excuse for you uh, to be disobedient to the Lord. Uh, you better Love the Lord with all your heart, all your might, all your soul. Lean not unto your own understanding, but in all that we acknowledge Him and let Him direct and let Him direct and let Him direct and let Him direct. Him direct, him direct your path. See, God is like a loving friend. He will defend you and whip you all at the same time. Can I tell you? There was a consequences for their actions, for the man and for the woman. They had to bear the consequences. They had to understand that they had to pay for what they did. The man and the woman. The woman, you were going to have to give yourself to the man. You were going to have to submit to him. There was a consequence to the woman. You were going to bear children and pain and travail. There was a consequence. But can I tell you that God still wasn't finished with you yet. For the man, you used to have sweat his victory. Now you got to labor, toil, and sweat. The ground that used to yield itself to you so easily. You could just walk on by and say corn grow, and corn would grow. You could walk on by and say sweet potatoes. I like a whole bunch of y'all. And they can go ahead and grow. Chicken, follow me to the frying pan. I give you all just like that for you. But can I tell you, even though things change, God is still not. Can I tell you? Can I, can I say this word to somebody right now? Who need this word? God is still not. Who need this word right here? But I'm going to give. God is still not done. Get you yet? He ain't done with you. Because in the midst of the consequences and in the midst of the judgment against Adam and Eve, there was a word, there was a word of future fruit. And I tell you, when God began to speak in the midst of you going through, when God began to speak of your future, Mm -hmm. But God begin to tell you what's going to happen. Uh -huh. I don't care what's going on. You better understand that God ain't done with you yet. You better know this. When God ain't done with you, God will put a word. He'll put a word 
right there in this map of things. In verse 15, I gotta get ready to go. But in verse 15, around about the middle part, it starts talking about the seed of the woman. Can I tell you right now, as of right now, Adam and Eve was by themselves. They didn't have no children. But God began to talk about the seed of the woman. He said, the seed of the woman will bruise the head of the serpent, and the serpent will bruise his heel. Can I tell you, look, the, 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 the serpent had tried to attack Adam and Eve to get to the seed. But can I tell you today that the seed that God has planted in you is so deep, it's so deep. Oh God, who am I helping right now? The seed that God has planted in you is so deep. You might not even know it there yourself, but can I tell you, there's a seed in you. No matter what you've done, no matter what you're going through, there's a seed in you that God, you would allow God to bring up out of you. You just got to allow God to speak that thing out of you into the atmosphere. See, it did not matter the sign of the failure. That seed is still there in Genesis. There's a promise uh, in the midst of your consequence. Uh, your seed, uh, despite your stumble, uh, will bruise the head of the serpent. Uh, it's seed. Uh, because God is talking about the future with Adam and Eve. Uh, we know that God uh, has not given up on them yet. Uh, it's like on your favorite. Uh, Y'all remember that time on Empire when it looked like uh, when it looked like Lucius had got blown up? I know all y'all was messed up. I know all y'all was oh, they got it. They finally got him. But when they showed the preview, you see Lucifer. Wait a minute. He ain't blowed up. Somebody in my shop music. But he ain't dead. It's the same way. It's the same way. When God began to wrote the preview on your life. And the enemy had already told you. Oh God. I, I got to quit. When God began to roll the preview of your life, uh, and you and the enemy had already told you uh, that you done messed up so bad, uh, the enemy had already said uh, that you done messed up, uh, you done did so much uh, that ain't nothing can save you, uh, ain't nothing can deliver you, uh, you done messed up, uh, but you don't mess around uh, and let God roll uh, the preview of your life. Uh, but see here, can I tell somebody? I don't know what you did, but I know good and well. It never wasn't bad. It was what Adam did. Adam messed up the whole world. Not only did he mess up the Eve, did he mess up Eve, but he messed up for generations, upon generations, upon generations, upon generations, upon generations, all the way down to 2019. He messed up the world for everybody. I don't know what you did. I don't know what you did to anybody. But you didn't mess it up for the whole world. Huh? So you couldn't have messed it up as bad as Adam. Adam messed up. Huh? That's why he was had. But can I tell you, huh? God began to roll huh? the preview of huh? the preview of his life. Huh? And as he began to go past Adam, huh? you begin to see Cain and Abel. Huh? You begin to see Seth. Huh? And he began to show him. Huh? He began to show him huh? Methuselah. And he began to show him huh? Noah. And he began to show him Moses huh? and the children of Israel. He began to show him David. He began to show him Daniel and the lion's den. He began to show him the prophets. Jeremiah, Isaiah. He began to show him Jesus. And he began to roll the preview of his life. He said, wait a minute. My seed is still going. I ain't got a seed right now. So that must mean that I'm going to have a seed. And if I'm going to have a seed, well then God ain't done with me yet. And I'm just here to tell somebody, you got to praise the Lord. I don't care what your man is. I don't care what you done. God ain't done with you yet. Because he put a seed in you. And that seed is going to come up. And that seed is going to come to fruition. And that seed is going to come to pass. And that seed is going to be a miracle. And that seed is going to be a blessing. And that seed is going to be a healing. And that seed is going to be a deliverance. That seed is going to be a hope. That seed is going to be a hope. That seed is going to be a husband. That seed is going to be a wife. Thing I want to tell you that he 
won't quit on you. Cause I don't know that he ain't done with you yet. Cause he won't quit on you. But if you one to six, he that has begun a good work in you, you'll perform until the coming of Jesus Christ. He that has begun a good work in you. And I tell you, the seeds that God has put in you for the beginning of the good work. I'm here to tell you, don't matter. Don't you fret. You just keep on holding on. And know the Lord is still working for you. The seed that is within you is a good work. The seed that is within you is a good work. And that good work, it shall come to pass. I don't care. That good work is for you. I don't care what the devil might tell you. I don't care what he say about you. I don't care what he show in you. But there's a seed in you. And that seed is going to be activated. When you come to Jesus with all one plea. Look, can I tell you the reason why I know your seed work? Because the seed that God put in the woman. Oh, can I tell you that seed ended up being very Mary's baby, amen. That oh seed God. passed down oh to the generation God. and ended up being Mary's baby. Oh and that seed got him out the womb, not conceived by a man's hand, but conceived by the Holy Ghost. That seed grew up to be to be a water walking, tongue talking, blind healing, dead raising, ear unstopping, eye opening. Oh, man of God. And went, took that same seed, and walked all the way to Calvary. And that seed was put on the cross. And that seed died on the cross. That seed was pierced in the side. That seed was whipped all night long. That seed got a crown of thorns. That seed hung high and was stretched wide. That seed gave up the ghost. That seed died. That seed went in the ground. That seed was in a bar too. That seed, that same seed, put Genesis 15, got up with all power in his hand. And when he got up, he brought the most seeds with him. He brought you and 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 me. He brought all of us. So God ain't done until we come to fruition. God ain't done until he get all the work out of us. God ain't done until he deliver you. God ain't done with you yet. So go ahead and stand on his promises.